uh, would you like to explain that? Uh, could you please uh, speak? Actually, you are not audible to me. Ma'am, there could be a network issue, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm really sorry. I think there could be a network issue because of which you are not audible. Let us, let us, okay, evaluate it further. That basically you see in the traditional classroom, teacher takes the responsibility of ensuring discipline, as you can see in the picture. But in the online classroom, virtual classroom, student has to make sure that he or she gets ready for the class, just like for the online class chooses a particular place to uh, to attend the class with proper you know table and chair uh, the device should be clearly visible like you can see in the picture here the teacher's role becomes to continuously coach the student and prepare the student to be self disciplined so in addition to the teaching of your subject if you also invest some time in coaching the students regarding being self-disciplined, then your students will be able to take maximum advantage of your virtual classes. Okay, the next point of comparison is distraction. Now, what are the distractions in a physical classroom? Can you please write it in the chat box? So in the physical classroom, when students are attending the class alongside their peers, right? What are the distractions they face? So we are talking about the physical classroom when students are attending the class face to face mode. What are the distractions they face, you know? Of course, they are friends. Yes, you are very right, Delness. Their friends are a big distraction, right? Social media, because they are using the phone over there also. So Facebook distracts them, Insta distracts them. They have a ping on the WhatsApp and it distracts them, right? Sometimes, yes, you're right, Lasma, that there could be a distraction uh, on the psychological front, issues at the home in the family may also distract them. And yes, are this the online gaming? The, the teacher, if he's teaching a large class of 70 to 80 students, might not even come to know that the students sitting in the back may be doing, uh, engaging in online games. Some of them may be sleepy, you're very right. You're very right. So I think very pertinent observations in the chat box by each one of you. Distractions abound in the traditional class also. And only thing is in the online class, since the student has that feeling that I am not being heard, I am not being watched. So I'm unseen, unheard and unsupervised because of which those distractions become even more. So you can find uh, that while you are teaching the class, some of the student may be engaged in a WhatsApp or in even talking to another friend on the phone while having switched off the camera and unmuted himself or herself. So these distractions are definitely there in the online class as well. So what would be the strategy to overcome these distractions? I would suggest a practical tip that, you know, it is always the attachment which leads to detachment. If the student is attached to your virtual class, attached in the way of engagement, like you all are attached with me right now, you are responding to my questions. You are so busy responding to my questions. At this point of time, if anyone in your family asks you, some question you might say, oh, please, I'm engaged, 
right? So similarly, I'm sure when you engage your students by involving them in an activity that they have to apply their mind on, it can be a simple activity like a question, or it can be an activity like a, a sharing an experience or something like that. Uh, then it, it will help. It will certainly help. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, let me put my PPT on the slideshow mode. So as you all said in the chat box, I'm also summarizing the same, that there are so many distractions, fear, social media, lack of concentration as well as they are there in the traditional classroom, as well as in the online classroom. But then if we engage the students in uh, doing some activities, certainly we will be able to overcome these distractions. No one is perfect. I am not perfect in my communication, right? I am not a perfect orator, but then I will have my methods of reaching out to you and you have your methods of reaching out to your students. Now, in this slide, what can you see? What I want to tell you through this slide is that whether it's a physical class or it's an online class, some students like to be anonymous. They don't like to be recognized. They are the back benches of your class. In the physical class, they will take the last bench so that the teacher can't see them. And in the online class, they will not switch on the camera. But I think I'm very lucky that in this class, we have 20 screens in which people have switched on their cameras and they are visible to us because you are all responsible people, you are the teachers, right? In your practical online class, many students don't like to show up. They like to hide, right? So we are going to handle this challenge. And how do we handle this challenge? We handle this challenge by bringing in variety in our class. See, online class gives us the liberty and the privilege of inviting other speakers also. In a virtual class, you can invite speakers from across the globe. So maybe we do this practice over here in the university also that during our routine classes, Sometimes we'll invite external speakers to address our students. And students who generally don't speak in the routine teacher's class might speak up in front of the external teachers. You know, they might show up, they might, uh, you know, establish their presence over there. But otherwise also, it's a great strategy, especially it's a plus point of the virtual class that you can have, uh, speakers from across the world and these days at very low cost because you are saving on travel time and you're saving on so many other costs that are involved in physical travel so this was one element that we discussed the comparison of the traditional class with the virtual class now let's move on to the strategies for effective communication in the virtual class before I exactly pinpoint on the strategies, I'd just like to give you an idea, and I think you would already know about it, synchronous online classes and asynchronous online classes. So I think as you know, synchronous online classes are like the class we are having now. That is the uh, resource person or the teacher and the taught they are all on the same platform in real time, right? So synchronous online classes are those that require the students and instructors to be online at the same time. So just like our present lecture, discussion, presentation. Whereas the second category of online teaching is asynchronous classes. So asynchronous classes are those classes in which the instructor records the material and provides the material lecture test assignments to the students, they can access it at any point of time. 
uh, okay so what is the future going to look like the future is it going to be a totally traditional class or is it going to be a totally online class the future is going to be a flipped learning a blended learning it will be a blend of asynchronous and synchronous teaching please watch this video the flipped classroom let's reverse where traditional homework and lecture take place now i must warn you beforehand watching this presentation can literally turn your world upside down the first thing most educators are going to ask is why flip well here are a couple reasons to consider with a flipped classroom the content becomes available to students beyond typical classroom time students are now able to access the content anytime benefit that comes with viewing content in video format is the ability to stop pause play etc students can write down questions about the content at home then when students enter the classroom they are already prepared to ask these questions to their teacher when a teacher flips a classroom that teacher is able to walk around the room ultimately flipping a classroom frees up time for teachers to work with students individually now let's take a quick break to think about how our students are used to acquiring knowledge students of today mostly learn from their phones and computers students of today are comfortable with the flip model because it's how they usually access knowledge lastly we know some students learn faster than others flipping a classroom allows teachers to personalize learning now how do you flip a classroom what steps should you take right now i'm going to outline an eight step path that i have successfully used to flip my classroom each step is represented with a star the first step in flipping a classroom begins with the buy-in get your students parents and administrators on board with the flip model step two curate the resources you need to flip a classroom these are resources for instruction, such as YouTube video, online worksheets, quizzes, electronics, etc. Now, moving on to the actual first day of class, classroom management is required for a flip model, just like a traditional model. Very early on, be sure to spend time and incorporate expectations and procedures, as this learning style may be new. Number four is technology training. Teachers need to learn how to curate videos through YouTube channels and create playlists, and students must be able to access and interact with online content. Now we get to the actual flipping. And the number five is assigned content for homework. Students will access content through videos, hyperdocs, interactive PowerPoints, slides, and much more. Next up, number six. Students work on problems during class time. Students get to work on the application of skills in class where a teacher walks around the room and facilitates and helps students as needed. Moving on to number seven, independent learning. With a flipped classroom, students become independent learners and have the ability to move through the curriculum at their own pace. And the last star in the sky, number eight, peer tutoring. Pair up your advanced students who mastered the content beforehand with students having a hard time completing the problems. So what does it actually look like? The traditional model has students attending school where content is delivered by teachers and students going home to work on problems. But here we are getting rid of that model and replacing it with a flip model. In the flip model, students work on problems when they are at school and when students are at home content is delivered online here are a couple tools you may need when flipping a classroom YouTube will allow you to provide video lessons social media can help disseminate content devices to access online content 
Google Doc links, slides to learn content, and sites to find the content. Readings can be used as well. Right now, I would just like to say thank you for your time, and please subscribe to this channel, and I really would appreciate it, and I would thank you very much. So I hope you enjoyed this video and the crux of it is that the future lies in combining synchronous and asynchronous teaching. Uh, anybody would like to share any observation regarding the video? Uh, Rehmat, would you like to say something? Rehmat. Uh, Rehmat, we have unmuted you. If you'd like to say, what is the crux of the video that you have watched regarding the flipped classroom model? Sorry? Yeah. Yes, yes. Done? Unmuted? Okay, we have unmuted you. Can you please, uh, would you like to say something? Yes, please. Paramat, if you'd like to say something, please say, Silakan Paramat. Okay, we have Ma'am Nurmala. Would you like to say something? Please excuse me if I'm not correct with the pronunciation of your name. We have Ma'am Nur Ma Nurmala on the first screen. Ma'am Nurmala. Yes, ma'am, we are just unmuting you. Uh, you need to unmute yourself now. Ma'am, please press the unmute button first. The host is inviting you to unmute. Yes. Okay. It's a flip classroom model. It is more interesting for the, our students, of course. And then the teacher can prepare the, uh, the, the content anytime in the day before we share uh, the content. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for sharing. So in crux, my friends, I will tell you that uh, before you actually switch over to the flipped classroom model, it is very important to have a conversation with your students regarding the advantages of this model. See, the biggest advantage lies in the fact that you can share the content with your students in advance. So the content, they can watch your video. As my colleague, Mr. Quatra is just going to share, you, share with you regarding Wakelet how you can share all the content on Wakelet and then your class time can be more effectively used in problem solving. That is the reason for which they have come to the class. Solving the problems, learning the skills. You can use your class time in a more interactive manner. Plus, you can give them the outcome of learning the skills by doing the activities in class. Plus, you can also pay attention to some students who need more attention. You will come to know that these students can't solve their problems and they need more attention. So hence, you can combine asynchronous teaching with synchronous teaching. At this point of time, there is a poll quiz for all of you. Please get ready to participate in this quiz. My question for you is, which of the following is a synchronous form of virtual teaching. Option A, online quiz you can attempt at your convenience. B, live online class on Zoom. C, pre-recorded lecture shared on LMS. D, reading material shared via mail.
so synchronous when you are teaching the students spontaneously all of you please go and answer this question for a full participation in the class i'll request my colleague puni that when the participation is done you can publish the result okay some people are giving the response on chat box if you can please answer on the poll window which is appearing in front of you it would be great otherwise in the interest of time we can just publish the results the way they are bapa ibu bisa digunakan please use the the polling which has been shared thank you thank you ravi sir yes the correct answer is option b that is live online class on zoom that is synchronous teaching when the teacher and the taught are all on the same platform and they are communicating with each other just like we are doing right now thank you very much for your response uh let's move to the next uh, question which is your most preferred tactic of assessing student engagement in a virtual class as a teacher which is your most preferred style most preferred tactic of assessing student engagement in a virtual class do you like to conduct a quiz between the lesson or do you like to ask students to share the webcam or do you like to invite students to read the text since you are english teachers or do you like to share the virtual whiteboard which one of the four options you prefer to engage the students this is just to for us to understand your preferences and again i request the question and the options are there in front of you on the screen kindly tick on the option you prefer and the poll results are right in front of us majority of us 58% prefer to conduct a quiz in between the lesson 21% prefer to ask students to share the webcam so that they can actually see the students expression like i can see you and find out how much you are interested in the class uh, 9% like to invite the student to read the text even this is a very good strategy for especially english teaching 12% share the virtual whiteboard which is very nice to ends on the virtual whiteboard so all the options are correct in this case we just wanted to understand which is the most popular option amongst indonesian teachers so thank you for sharing your views with us uh moving on to the next slide quarter sir it's got stuck up all tab all tab okay great great thank you ji thank you so uh i will summarize uh since the next speaker is also i mean we are running short of time so i will just summarize by sharing with you what is the communication strategy which we can adopt to enhance the effectiveness of our online classes i'll take the example of a simple case this is a practical example real life experience how these teachers improved their teaching what they simply did is a group of teachers together they set the goals they planned and designed the lesson together right then the teacher one teacher taught the lesson to the other teachers you know teacher teaching in front of the colleagues the other colleagues gave them the feedback how this lesson can be taught still 
in a better way still more interesting and then collectively they decided how to improve the content and the pedagogy this is known as the plan do check act cycle pdca now when we have colleagues to collaborate with us we can follow this method otherwise even single handedly when we plan our lessons and we you know we plan the lesson we conduct the lesson we take feedback from students i generally take feedback from my students after every week and try to find out how i can improve my lessons because every student has a unique need and based on student feedback we can improve on our content also and and on our style of teaching also the pedagogy also so i have been a practitioner of the pdca cycle the plan do check act cycle given by edward deming the quality guru and if you like it you can also try it in your virtual class so ultimately you can develop a communication strategy in virtual classes especially it is very important that let the rules be very clear to the student that for example when you are doing asynchronous teaching that means you are providing the content to the student in advance where the content will be available and shortly mr quatra is going to take you through a virtual tour of how to make the content available to the students in an interesting manner so make the rules of the game very clear to the students that my content will be available to you over here this is my teaching sequence this is how you can reach out to me via mail or whatever other method you may choose to connect with your students so it's very important to clarify the entire path with the students when you do this your students and their parents are clear about how teaching is being done and there is a routine is set for communication you will not get disturbed every time so you can set a time i'm sure you all are doing it that for clarification of doubts you can set aside a separate time in which the students can communicate with you so to sum it up i would say that uh, in virtual classrooms it is very important to relay clear and concise messages sometimes less is also more less content but more uh, interaction by way of activities so that people experience the things and finally i would strongly recommend the use of flipped classroom in which you provide the content in advance to the students they watch your video before they come to the class and you use the class time more effectively for the purpose of discussion and problem solving with these words i hand over to my colleague for the hands on experience of the wakelet platform well good afternoon the hormati para pejabat tv on dignitaries it is a privilege to be a part of this great initiative merupakan hak istimewa untuk menjadi bagian dari istiaf bazar ini my namaste to the great teachers in fact we all are what we are today because of the efforts of some teacher walked an extra mile who was more passionate than the others and could sense beyond what she could see and molded the raw material called student into a personality who is there to face the realities of life no one can deny this fact i'm sure all those 500 plus guru bazaar sitting here would feel that we cannot deny that what we are today is because of the teacher who made a difference in our lives so upaya hari ini merupakan mengormatan kebada semi guru bazaar i salute to the all the great teachers pandemic has changed the normal 
and the new order is that how i can reach out apart from the technology to my students giving him or her the same warmth that i was in a position to do that in the class i saw the chat box and i am very happy to note that many of us are already using various online tools i could see some of you talking about the nearpod edupuzzle edutom moodles padlet the list is long but today i would like to share with you one of the most user friendly free online tool which is there for you to organize your content share it and of course you know you can reorder it in a communicative mode where both synchronous and asynchronous type of teaching that we were talking about short time ago are followed so my question is how many of you are already familiar of the tab called wakelet can we have a poll question on that so you will be flashed a poll question where i would want your inputs as to how many of you are already familiar with this free online platform called wakelet and it is flashed there right in your so i can you can submit your answers you've got 30 seconds to go so how many people have already answered we will just give you 15 seconds more when we will publish the answers okay we can stop the poll and can we have the answers there all right uh 21% of us they have said that they are aware and they have used it and but the other 79% of the people they feel that they have not heard of it so we will act as peer learners also peer facilitators also let me share with you one story and it is being flashed there on your screen right away the name of this story is pair of falcons
Now, that was the story, but it had a question at the end. And the question will be shared with you in the Google form where you are expected to write the moral of this short story. We will be sharing with you the Google form link and also we will be sharing this entire presentation with you on this Wakelet platform, the link of which we again would be shared with you during the course of this presentation towards the end. But for now, please mull over the question and the ask the moral of this story of pair of falcons. You have time to answer that, but let us now move forward to the Wakelet platform that we were talking about and 21% of us are already familiar and are using this platform. So if you have a device where you can just quickly log on to the path mentioned there, it is https colon double slash wakelet.com. I want you to please move over there and look for the benefit. It's the platform which is integrated with all the platforms, the majority of the platforms. We were talking about the Google Meet, the Microsoft Teams, the Flipgrid, they, the Facebook, Instagram. So this platform is already integrated with the majority of the other apps, which is the beauty of this, where you can at least organize your content, You've got some references, you can paste it. I will be tell, taking you through that also. So very user-friendly and integrated with most of the other platforms which are available. And to top it, it is totally free. And what are the fee key features? You can collaborate, you can copy the collection and share it and edit it also. You can embed your collection into any blog or website or any learning management system which you're already using. And to top it again, it also carries with it an immersive reader feature. That means whatever the text is mentioned there, English language or any language can be translated to the language which is 60 different languages. And fortunately, we have the Indonesian language, which also is a part of this immersive reader. So your student can, again, have the benefit both of the global language, which is English, which you're already teaching them so well, and also to have more comprehensive insight to what is mentioned there into the translated language. So this is again a very key feature, the immersive reader feature. So typical enabled Wakelet classroom is, you know, where you curate the resources. I'm sure we have all logged on to the wakelet.com by now. You can put it in the chat box whether you've done it or started doing it. Okay, the wakelet. Dot com. That is where. So how we can do it? Let me carry forward the journey. So these are some of the features. Some of the teachers have been using it for the classroom letters. They have been using it for documenting their own professional development resources collecting various resources from anywhere. They've been using it to bookmark them for interactive classes, lessons. They're doing it for lesson planning. So this is, these are the various ways where the teachers around the globe are already using this Wakelet platform. So all you got to do is, if you've logged on to wakelet.com, you sign up and for educators, it is free of cost. Let me again reiterate, totally free of cost. 
You just need to sign up and you would find that this is the, what the homepage looks like. Okay, so it is free. You can save your content, you can organize and you can share any content across the web, across the globe, across with anyone that you would want to. You can even make it public. We'll be talking about that also. So on the home, once you say there is a how to create your own collection. So there is a po positive plus sign there where you press that and you would find that there is a title page where you can mention, you can upload an image, even you can upload an image to your profile. And there are six plus various ways where you can just start and share the content or organize or save your content. One is any URL. The first one says, paste the URL. You paste whichever URL you find on the wall, bookmark that and you can paste any web address there. We've also curated the collection of today's seminar and we would be keep on uploading it, updating it in the during course of those three days that are to follow with the resources and also our communication with you in times to come. So you can add a text to have a YouTube link. You just saw that the flipped classroom YouTube was directly played from this Wakelet collection that we are sharing with you today. So that flip classroom YouTube link was pasted in and you just had to click and play that. So you have tweets, it is directly interlinked with the tweet Twitter account and also any bookmarks. You want to make it aesthetically pleasing. You have an option of image uploading. You can upload your presentations. The only thing is that a PPT presentation has to be converted into a PDF format to upload it here. And you would find that up to 50 MBs can be loaded directly. Otherwise, you can split it. You have something on the Google Drive. It can be shared. So today's recording would also, the link of that would be uploaded on this uh, Wakelet collection, the link of which we would be sharing. Of course, OneDrive is another thing where you can share. And if you want to make your own video and share it with your participants, so you just go to click on the video and it directly integrates with the Flipgrid, which is another one of the free tools that we have. So any question if you have as of now, you can just put it on the chat box. Have you logged into the wakelet.com? All right. Now, once you curate it using all those six and seven various uh, uh, ways of uploading, let me see the chat now. Okay, people are worried about the tendons. We would we'd be sharing with you the, uh, the link and you just have to submit. And the, my humble submission is whenever you are requested to fill your name, please ensure that you put in the correct alphabets in the correct manner because the same very data would be used for the certification purpose. So coming back to the sharing of the collection, there are three ways. If you are a beginner, you just want to try making or curating the collection by you know, putting up your resources as they come to your mind. So private is something where only the person who has curated would be able to see his or her collection. So am I clear? Second, you want the entire world to have a look at your collection. You have to share it by going public. So anyone can share that collection. And if you want just a few people, for example, in this workshop, we would be sharing the, this link with the people who are part of this workshop. So that means you can share your collection 
with the people who have the link, which of course we will be sharing with you and you have to click on the unlisted. So three ways, private, which is solely for me, when I curate it, build my, create my collection, unlisted for a group of people who have the link and I have to share that link with it. And then if you want the entire people globe to watch at your uh, collections, uh, you can select the public. Okay, now how I can share, it is very simple. There are various ways you can uh, make a QR code. You can copy this link, share it in the Google Meet, which you're already using, the, the uh, team, uh, the Microsoft Teams, the Twitter, various Facebook, other things. You can just share that link through that, or you can copy this link and share it with your participants just the way we are going to do with you. So very simple. Uh, you can try that. And of course, many of you talked about uh, various other tools. Uh, well, these are some of the other tools that are available, uh, uh, which people have been using it. Neopod, I could see many of you already talking about it. Kahoot, someone talked about it. EduPuzzle, Padlet, I could see. But there are so many other tools uh, which are also available online virtual tools but my again um, personal experience has been that we are some of us are new to the technology so we should pick up a tool which is again user friendly and that was precise the re reason that we were sharing this wakelet uh, tool with you now let me show you the actual where uh, i have uh, put the Wakelet, uh, the thing, if you can just have a look at the screen, I'm sure you can watch the screen now. So what I have done is I have pasted the flyer that we made and the at the image uploaded the image there. Now, this is again something I would want you to just have a look at how it the immersive reader feature works. So it is in English, but I can show you there are different other languages also. Uh, choose a language, translate a language. And if you can go there, you can see there is an Indonesian, uh, this thing uh, there, which I would just share with you. Let me play it with you. Making virtual teaching engaging entertaining and dynamic a three-day experiential journey of exploring and mastering the nuances of online teaching so that was in english now let me see if i can save the indonesian as a language and we can have a look at that but there is again it can be translated there So this, again, if you write it there, this can be the, the speaker, the immersive reader speaker would speak in the language that you, uh, of your local language, which is there. So this is one feature. Now you see what I have done is, there are few videos which I wanted to share with you. I would want to share with this. So this is how I can insert the YouTube link and it can be directly played there. We'll be doing it tomorrow. You can see there is a Google Doc, which is there, which there you all are expected to write the moral of the little video of pair of falcons that you saw. So this is where you can uh, click and uh, put your um, uh, comments, your answers there, and your particulars there. These are the various videos you would feel that uh, during, as this program progresses, for example, today's recording and today's PowerPoint presentation, by the end of the day, we would be uploading it on this Wakelet connection. So the beauty is that you can reorder, re-edit. All you have to do is you go to this button here, edit collection. 
and whatever changes you want to make you can make it right there this plus means you can add anything you can go to the right these are the two edit and delete so you can also delete anything you want that you do not want it now to be shared with your participants or part of the collection that you've done and it automatically saves any changes that you make are almost on a real time being uh, saved on this collection and all you have to do is click on the button done now i was talking about you sharing thing you see these are the three various ways private unlisted and public and i have made it an unlisted uh, collection where i would be sharing the link with a limited group of people which is the honorable participants of this workshop uh, invite again is a way anyone can access this is how that uh, the qr code that i was talking about uh, can be made cop the code can be copied and shared with anyone uh, you can use a email to share that so various other ways are there and like i mentioned the the best way to have a feel of it get your hands dirty by going on to www.stpvswakelet.com and once you complete it this is the done uh, it and the entire thing would be saved so any questions or before we move forward um so we are running short of time yes so we will move forward i agree with you sir uh, so i would now go to the final leg of this learning uh some of the tips again it's a recollection uh, it's a recollection of whatever you were already doing recollection of what uh, uh, we talked about in the first session and recollection of which again what the expert says uh, whenever you are teaching online to have that connect that we feel is missing your physical presence can be there when you show your face any videos that you are sharing my personal experience also by when i share it with the experts like you they say that a video should be short about 3 to 4 minute video is enough uh, for us to keep the audience engaged the slides that we make you could see that we have tried to follow the 6 by 6 formula of slide making presentation where we said six words in a line and six lines in a slide with a font which is uh, uh, so big that even a person or a student watching it on a smartphone can watch the uh, see the the content of that uh some things we have to make a communication personal and i tell you when you take the names of uh, your uh, students what feeling they have i am reminded of one of the uh, my english teachers when i was in I, i think she taught us up till ninth standard in school and she always used to call the students by name my full name is sarabjit but she used to call me sarab and that kind of warmth i still can feel whenever i share her name uh, uh, her uh, i quote example so this is another way so personal communication that personal touch comes when you use names when you are free to share your own stories of learning stories where you could we wanted to do a thing you failed at doing it at the first step of course sharing that i am just a normal human being and have learned as the way it is process to so self disclosure is something which again makes that connect between you and your student some off the cuff chats of course we just had a, a diwali season just gone by so when the first comment you make is how was the holiday the weekend that you spent did you did you watch anything new so just off the topic chat and the best is when you are yourself be your normal self because when we are our normal self the communication comes from the core of my heart so it is a heart to heart communication and what bigger connect can 
be when from your heart you are trying to reach out to your students heart so languages should be punctuated with emotions of course if it is online use a lot of gist and emojis we are doing it on our whatsapp many of us are already doing it and of course the language and the grammar particularly so when i am an english language teacher i have to be careful about these things which i am sure many of us are already taking care of just like the written communication the speaking communication also needs to be punctuated so pauses are very effective but pauses should not be where the you know it should not be be in the middle of the anything that i'm saying pauses should be just like i use a comma an exclamation mark a question mark or a full stop when i'm writing something emphasis modulation the pace of the speech again it varies and thank you ravi sir for updating us that we in indonesia believe then you know we have a punctuated slow paced uh, speed uh, speech so that that it is easily comprehensible so that is one of the things which i'm sure we all are taking the pitch should be loud enough so that everyone is able to uh, listen and also variation is important because one monotone pitch can also sometimes distract the participant some of the skills of course i i would be sharing with you patience uh, i believe this is one attribute which matters most to the person who has chosen a noble profession like teaching attentiveness uh, irrespective of what my personal condition is my attentiveness is shown there felt whether i'm in physical proximity with my student or whether i'm in a virtual proximity clarity of communication subject knowledge we all understand the ability to use positive language i think uh, this virtual teaching you know there is a new concept which has come of digital body language now digital body language comes again from the way you log in not just the way you speak and the, the way you make gestures or your postures it also comes the way you respond to the digital communication so that all should be a positive language is a skill which again math matters emotions are very important we already talked about it time management of course ravi sir is looking at his watch time and again he wants us to finish on time which we are i think we are going to do it and the the next aspect is the ability to read the minds of your student it is very very important you see this is where you if you have that skill you can totally find out the expectation the reception level the current mental state of mind of your student which probably when we were doing it physically we could do it but now we have to develop that skill calming presence of course uh, uh, we have to be the teachers have to be like a duck you know what is the quality of a duck you know if you just go around to the stream and watch up in a pond a duck waggling through you could see the face the face is so calm so serene so much in control but if you watch beneath the water you can find the way that duck is vigorously paddling just to swim across so that calming presence is there irrespective of what we have goal oriented focus i am sure we all are working on an outcome based education curriculum whether in india or whether in indonesia this is what again our new national education policy is also laying a lot of stress on so always outcome based goal oriented focus should be here your examples should be related to what they can actually uh, you apply on the real time basis and some of the more skills the ability to handle surprises you never know you know what uh, i was uh, you know one of my co teachers was sharing that i asked my student online when they were taking these classes you know uh, why did you not submit your assignment 
and he says, I'm in hospital uh, down with COVID. Just an out of the blue talk. And how he could get out of it, that was a total, you know, taken back statement by the student. So we as faculty need to have that ability to handle surprises, both positive, pleasant, and not so pleasant. You know, students are shy of doing things. They can come up with various channels. So we need to have that persuasion skills. We need to have that tenacity. We have to have, we call it, uh, uh, Diplomatic politeness, you know, you know we, we have to have that politeness where we cannot, uh, you know, let also go off the focus or you've given an assignment, it has a deadline, the student has so many ways of coming up with reasons of not doing that. So that is where your, uh, the, your determination and of course the closing ability is there. And last but not the least, one of the skill is willing to uh, learn, the willingness to learn. And I'm sure uh, uh, all those people who have registered have that urge and willingness to learn. And that is precisely the reason that they are here with us. So this is a learning with an open and receptive mind, which again is the biggest skill and tool of an inspiring teacher. So in short, the objective should be to grab the attention that attention can be grabbed by a statement by your grooming while you're online the smile the animation of your face on your face and also some kind of an icebreaker or a context setting statement we need to focus on the interest we need to create the constant interest and that is only created when i am able to address this five letters, which is form of a sentence, which says, what is in it for me? When I'm always focusing on what is in it for me, that interest level is there. Desire, creating of desire. When you talk about the relevance and the strength of the curriculum, the outcome or the real time examples, the, the desire is aroused. And finally, the action, the steps and processes to again get the objective or the outcome of the curriculum or the lesson that we were trying. So in the end, I would like to share one more story of an inspirational teacher with you.
that was a story of an inspiring teacher. Before I ask a question or two, I would just like to say this quote that is right there in front of the screen. Education is not a name of any degree or certificate that can be shown to others as a proof. It's the name of our attitude, our actions, our language, our behavior with others in real life. If this we can imbibe and inculcate in the students of my class, I think the world is going to be a wonderful place, full of humanity, full of prosperity, full of peace, irrespective of whether there is a COVID-19 or 20. No one but the teacher and a passion for teaching and a connect with the student in the class can overcome any pandemic, whatever it may be. So ladies and gentlemen, this journey of beginning and learning, let us begin with an open and receptive mind. Thank you, Ravi, sir, for giving us this option, opportunity, and we are open to a question or two and the formal announcements from your side. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Your Bahasa has improved. I can tell you that thing, sir. <laughs> I mean, you're using quite a bit of Bahasa. Of course, accent is a little bit different, but uh, very happy to see that you're using the Bahasa. Probably next time, sir, you should be wearing a Batik also like me. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you, Sarabdit. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sunena, for, you know, for, for sharing your uh, insightful uh, aspects about, uh, you know, about communication and about online teaching. Trimakasi, thank you, Pa, once again. Thank you, everyone, uh, dear uh, teachers uh, from the province of Sumatra Uttara. Uh, Bapaibu, we have some important points. Kita ada beberapa hal, Bapaibu, yang kita mau disampaikan. Sarabjit, sir, please allow me to speak in Bahasa also, sir, just to make sure everyone understands this, sir. Yeah. Uh, Bapaibu, yang pertama, semua Bapaibu, please make sure yang Bapaibu yang masih belum ikut yang grup WA, tolong Bapaibu di check emailnya. Karena semua peserta yang udah daftar, udah dapat email. Di dalam email Bapak Ibu, kita ada link untuk grup WA. Karena ada hampir seribu guru Bapak Ibu yang ikut. Kita udah bikin empat grup ya Bapak Ibu. Jadi ada grup satu, grup dua, grup tiga, dan grup empat. Uh, jadi kita minta Bapak Ibu tolong di klik email. Dan di klik yang grup WA. Dan bisa diikut Bapak Ibu. Karena di grup WA kita semua komunikasi yang di jalan yang dengan baik dan efisien adalah dari uh, WhatsApp group. Jadi tolong kita minta Bapak Ibu diikut grup WA. Tapi kalau Bapak Ibu ada yang masalah, mungkin mungkin nggak ketemu email, sebenarnya udah ada Bapak Ibu, karena kita nggak kirim sekali. Kita udah kirim mungkin dua kali atau tiga kali. So I request you to please check your email. Tapi kalau Bapak Ibu belum dapat email, please WhatsApp. Saya tadi udah dikirim uh, nomor saya di, uh, di WhatsApp group, saya kirim lagi uh, nomornya. Jadi Bapak Ibu yang masih belum dapat emailnya, belum dapat email, masih bisa WA ke saya. Dan untuk Bapak Ibu yang masih di di YouTube, karena mereka belum ada di chat box, jadi saya ulang lagi nomor WA-nya yang Bapak Ibu bisa di bisa di WA 0815 994 7794. Bapak Ibu saya ulang ya. 0815-994-7794. Ini nomor adalah Bapak Ibu. Untuk yang Bapak Ibu yang masih belum dapat, yang belum gabung yang grup WA, bisa tolong dikirim uh, uh, WA-nya. Dan kita dibantuin untuk diikut grup WA. Karena jadi komunikasi bisa lancar ya Bapak Ibu. Itu poin pertama. Poin kedua Bapak Ibu adalah besok uh, kita ada yang sesi kedua atau yang hari kedua. Tapi kita mulainya jam setengah dua ya Bapak Ibu. Uh, hari ini kita mulai jam satu karena ada inaugurasi itu kan itu hari pertama ada inaugurasinya. Tapi besok kita mulainya jam setengah dua Bapak Ibu. So we start at 1.30 uh, waktu Indonesia Barat Bapak Ibu. Itu yang poin kedua. Yang poin ketiga Bapak Ibu yang PowerPoint uh, yang tadi sama yang uh, recorded link uh, yang sesi yang kita di udah di record kita dikirim linknya ke semua peserta Bapak Ibu. Jadi nanti kita dikirim lewat WA Bapak Ibu. Jadi makanya yang harus diikut 
grup WA Bapak Ibu. Ya, jadi tolong semua Bapak Ibu yang diikut. Dan juga satu hal Bapak Ibu yang penting sekali adalah yang waktu isi kehadiran. Bapak Ibu tolong waktu isi kehadiran tolong perhati-hati. Please be careful while entering your names. Kapan selalu Bapak Ibu, whatever names you're entering, please enter the name as you need it in your certificate. So please, we request you to please take little time, enter your right name without spelling mistakes. Apakah pakai gelar atau tidak pakai gelar, itu sesuai Bapak Ibu. Apapun Bapak Ibu yang dimasukin ke, uh, ke namanya Ibu, nanti itu yang adalah di sertifikatnya Bapak Ibu. Tapi ada peraturan ya Bapak Ibu untuk sertifikatnya yang kita udah di-share di WhatsApp group. Dan juga email address Bapak Ibu. Karena ada beberapa Bapak Ibu yang belum dapat email karena yang Gmail ada tulisannya cuma Gmail. Yang L-nya lupa atau mungkin ya error-nya. Atau ada yang ada yang nulis Gmaili, itu kan G-M-A-L-I. Jadi nggak mungkin emailnya bisa terima Bapak Ibu. So we request you all to please uh, check waktu Bapak Ibu mau diisi uh, yang uh, form kehadiran dan lain-lainnya untuk tiga hari. Tolong kita minta Bapak Ibu untuk yang perhatikan untuk isi namanya yang lengkap dengan gelar sesuai yang butuhan di sertifikat dan juga yang email address yang benar ya Bapak Ibu. So and then juga Bapak Ibu uh, India is actually is just not about Bollywood ya Bapak Ibu. Pasti Bapak Ibu kan yang tahu India more about Bollywood. Tapi ini adalah sesuatu yang kita mau disampaikan beyond Bollywood. Jadi itu adalah sesuatu like today we have the webinar session one. So also please allow me Bapak Ibu to share information about India, Indonesia yang linksnya tentang culture, tentang banyak hal ya Bapak Ibu. Jadi banyak yang kerjasama yang bisa antara India dan Indonesia. Itu aja Bapak Ibu yang kita mau disampaikan. Terima kasih banyak. Thank you so much for all your active participation Bapak Ibu. Sampai ketemu lagi, sampai jumpa lagi besok ya Bapak Ibu. Jam setengah dua Bapak Ibu besok. Terima kasih semuanya. Sampai ketemu lagi. Selamat yang semuanya terima kasih selamat siang bapak ibu terima kasih thank you everyone sampai ketemu lagi bapak ibu terima kasih uh, uh, Sarabji, sir can we just keep can we unmute everyone sir so if everyone, anyone wants to say something let them just say yeah. bapak ibu kalau ada unmute mau unmute everyone yang... unmute yeah. everyone yes yes bapak ibu kalau mau sampaikan sesuatu kita mau unmute semuanya ya bapak ibu dan juga bapak ibu tolong Tolong diambil foto ya Bapak Ibu, tolong ambil foto dan di share ya Bapak Ibu di WhatsApp group. Maaf kita lagi sibuk dengan banyak hal yang kita lagi di manage, jadi kita ngambil foto. Tapi Bapak Ibu tolong diambil foto dan di share di WhatsApp group. Terima kasih, thank you so much. Uh, kalau ada Bapak Ibu yang mau disampaikan, silakan kita udah unmute ke semuanya. So have you unmuted everyone sir? Have you unmuted? Unmute all. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu for all your active participation. We really appreciate. I mean, it is still the end of the session. We had 450 plus participants. We really appreciate that. Terima kasih semuanya. Dan juga Bapak Ibu yang masuk di YouTube. Uh, terima kasih ya Bapak Ibu. Maaf uh, yang Bapak Ibu nggak bisa ikut yang di Zoom. Tapi nggak apa-apa Bapak, Bapak Ibu. Yang sama sih. Cuman yang Bapak Ibu tolong make sure ikut yang grup WA. Jadi komunikasi bisa lancar ya Bapak Ibu. Jadi semua komunikasi uh, semua Bapak Ibu bisa diterima. Terima kasih semuanya. Thank you. Sampai jumpa lagi Bapak Ibu. Thank you so much. Jaga kesehatan ya Bapak Ibu. Please take care of yourself. Please take care of your families. And we will see you again tomorrow jam setengah dua ya Bapak Ibu. Jam setengah dua uh, waktu Indonesia Barat. Terima kasih semuanya. Thank you so much. Terima kasih. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Abhijit, sir, thanks a lot, sir. Thank you for you know for the wonderful insights, sir. Really, you, sir. very very interesting, sir. And also, uh, please do convey our sincere thanks to uh, Aman, sir. Also to uh, uh, to Dr. Uh, Sunaina, ma'am, uh, to Supriya, ma'am, and and Puneet ji and everyone, sir. Thank you so much for thank the wonderful conversation. Thank, thank, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you too much. Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay, Papa Ibu, tolong jaga kesehatan ya, Papa Ibu. Please take care. Please, uh, our best wishes to you, your family, and your colleagues in your schools.